blessed. Earth brings us to life and nourishes us. Earth takes us back again. It's fitting to quote Thich Nhat Hanh, the Buddhist monk who made such an impression upon our world and whose flame has been snuffed from this existence and yet is with us still. He says birth and death are present in every moment. Welcome to Irvine United Congregational Church this evening. Welcome to those of you who are here, who are here, and welcome to those of you who are joining us online. There's something about an evening observation of Ash Wednesday that is fitting for the heaviness of this day. It marks the beginning of Lent, of course, and it seems fitting that we gather in somber reflection at this moment in our world today. Tonight, we come for the imposition of ashes. These ashes, which are made of yesteryear's palm branches, once green, now grayed, Reminding us of our own mortal journeys, we are ever in transition. We do not remain the same. We grow older, even our hair <laughs> turns gray. We are reminded of the brittleness of life. These ashes, these ashes tell a story of our mortality. And I think they tell a story about our divinity, too. So tonight, we shall pause. We shall pause to take a break from the world around us, pause to reflect, to pray, and to impart as we are imposed upon by a fate that will not let us go, but instead marks us. Lent is a journey of intense self-examination, of penitence for alienation from God and one's fellow creations, and for preparation for restoration. It is a journey that requires honesty, dedication, and face-to-face -face confrontation with the cross. It is a dying of old to prepare for the new. To Easter, there are no shorter routes. This is the Lenten journey we embark upon today. In just a moment, we'll be lighting candles together. So if you happen to be at home, you might find a candle so that you can participate in this with us. And then, of course, we will be imparting of ashes. And you may have to get creative at home. You might not have last year's palm branches, but I hope that you can find a little bit of soot and ash so that we can participate in this together, recognizing our connection with one another here, with you online, with Christians around the world, with past and present and even future. We remember those words, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. From the earth we come to the earth we return, ever coming and returning to God. I love gathering in the evening like this. The symbolism of gathering in the dark. The play of light and shadow reminding us of the balance of light and darkness in our world. And so tonight, we'll ob observe the light and the night. Begin by lighting of a shared community candle where soon we'll light our candles together. Fire is your sacrament, O oh God. Fire is sacred. We light this flame to affirm that new light is ever waiting to break through to enlighten our ways. 
that new truth is ever waiting to break through to illumine our minds. And that new love is ever waiting to break through to warm our hearts. Amen and welcome. Let us remain seated as we sing our meditation song, Wait for the Lord. The season of Lent calls us to journey along the edge to anticipate that final trip to Jerusalem. Lent calls us to the cutting edge when the wheat falls to the ground and new life comes forth. Lent not only calls us to give up something, but also invites us to participate in the mystery of God with us. Grace, we are called from grief into gladness, despair into hope, estrangement into right relations with each other and with the earth. So come apart from the busyness of family and work and dwell in the presentness of God, source and ground of our being. Through grace, we are called to renew ourselves and our life's purpose as we gather with others who are searching. This Lent season, it might be time to venture, as Jesus did, into the shadowy areas of our lives confident of God's merciful light surrounding us as well as willingly accepting the support of others. Lent is not about the ostentatious fasting that Isaiah scoffed at, but a time to open ourselves to more light by lifting the lamp a little higher, by being God's light to others and receiving it from them. It's time to lean, to learn something new about God and move outwards to do something with it. Lent 
might also be a time for us to move inwards with trust, to allow God to show us more of our own need and do something about that. As we live with the memory of the light and the hope of the Easter light to come, may the shadows we encounter become for us places of healing, wisdom, and hope as well as fuel for the flame of light that we pass on to others. As light bearers, let us be for others as merciful, gracious, and loving as God has been to us. God has taken the risk of sending the light of the word into the chaos and terror of the world, and the darkness has not overcome it. God trusts us to keep ourselves faithful and transparent carriers of that light for the world. As the saying goes, better to light a candle than curse the darkness. So, you are invited to light a candle to reflect upon the dark places you need to feel light. You might light a candle in remembrance of someone, or perhaps you light a candle in hope. You might light a candle with a question you seek to find an answer, or you might simply light your candle for peace. You are invited to come down and light the candle.
out of nothingness we came, through birth into life. From the life of God, the universe unfolded into being. From the heart of God, creation goes on until the end of time. Let us embrace the God who enfolds us. The scripture reading this evening is from the book of Psalms, chapter 51, verses 1 through 4, 6 and 7a, and 8 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sins are ever before me. Against you, you alone, I have sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Your desire, truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my heart, in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a right, a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast away your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me the joy of your salvation and sustain me a willing spirit. Something innately sad about Ash Wednesday. There's this awareness of death. And that makes us sad. 
Ash Wednesday is a far cry from the celebration of Fat Sunday, even the balance that we shared together. The shouting and the singing and dancing, the bright colors faded away now, muted by black ash. Yes, I suppose there is something that's innately sad about the day. Even the church is darker. It's dark outside. Our lights are dimmed. We're forced to look a little deeper at the darkness of our world, to peek into the dark places in our lives. Ash Wednesday interrupts our comfort. It interrupts our routine. The imposition of ashes imposing itself upon us, leaving its mark on us. A smudge that refuses to hide away, that makes itself plain and visible for any and all to see. An intentional imperfection that messes up our makeup, that forces the hair out of our face, that calls attention to who we are in this world, to whom we belong, where we came from, And where we shall return, the imposition of ashes, oh, what an imposition it is. That bit of ash, the bitter ash, it forces us to pause for a moment, to get out of the evening traffic, to delay dinner, and instead think deep thoughts about who we are where we come from, where we'll go. Here in the darkness of this night, we are confronted with our own humanity. We who live in a culture that thinks we can live forever. If we just make enough money, we can buy immortality. Heck, we can go to the moon, outer space, 30 seconds at a time. We can stretch out our skin. We can detoxify our bodies if we drink that right drink or go to the right gym. If we just get enough, do enough, buy enough, perhaps we'll be enough so we can beat those odds, live forever. Who needs religion when we have become our own gods, right? We control our destiny. Ashes to ashes, death to death. Those ashes imposed upon us remind us that we don't get to control everything. Quite the imposition. Yes, we've been imposed upon. Ash Wednesday has become more powerful for me now than it once was. Two years ago, we entered into the season completely unaware that Lent would extend far beyond the six weeks and change. It lingered so much longer than we wanted it to. It was clear a year ago we didn't even get to be here together. But that ash was thick upon us. COVID had already taken so many lives by this point in time. The ashes were so heavy. And now today, as fires burn throughout major cities in Ukraine and ash floats through the air, it hangs so thick. This ash of destruction, light enough to float in the air, catching the wind, tumbling and turning, so light but at the same time, so heavy. I can't look at today's ashes without seeing that ash falling upon a war-torn country. Quite the imposition, isn't it? COVID reminded us of what we already knew, that we are all connected. That virus was never going to stay in one place. It shot through community to country and continent and back and forth until it got every single one of us in some way or another. 
And as we watch our news feeds, we are reminded again. We are imposed upon the ash falling and floating. And it lands upon us too. Ashes to ashes. I guess that's why so many people don't want to do Ash Wednesday. (laughs) They don't want to be reminded of the ashes or our own mortality, of our constant connection with death. So we try to sanitize ourselves. We like to sanitize our faith, too. We don't want to have to meet in the shower. We prefer the bright light of the morning, the joyful sounds of Sunday singing. And yet here we are in darkness has descended. We cannot help but watch it as it envelops us. Fear. For the sun has set this night and the darkness closes in. Now maybe this sounds (laughs) especially morbid, but there's a part of me that needs to feel the darkness. I have a need to feel the ash upon my skin. I have a need to be reminded of my own mortality, to feel that discomfort, to mourn even, to sit in the melancholy of the night, to face it. That's what Ash Wednesday does for us. It forces us to face it. For Christians, This is a foreshadowing of what will come, a reminder of the way the story ends. It ends where it begins, from the earth to the earth. But we also know there's more to our story than death. And yet we cannot ignore the dark parts of the story, of our lives, of our world. We can't ignore the ash. We cannot move from Fat Sunday celebrations to the glory of Easter. We have to go through the hard parts. We have to sit in the dark sometimes. We have to feel the weight of the ash, the discomfort on our skin, the imposition upon our lives. Just as we cannot ignore the now 5.96 million deaths worldwide from COVID. Nor can we ignore the anxiety and uncertainty, the fear, and all of the unrest as we see what is happening in Ukraine. There is darkness in our world. There are things that are outside of our control. But there is also light. Here in the shadows of our night, we can already see that the light is among us. We hold both, shadow and light. It's a tension, yes. For me, there's something cathartic about the acknowledgement of the shadows. I feel like there is honor in the naming. It is there. I can't ignore it. It's still there even when I try, gnawing at me, looming. Just as there is honor in our remembering those who have died. We don't forget them once they are gone. Their ashes haven't fully blown away from our lives. We wear the smudge of death in life. We recognize our connection and awareness of the circle of life and death and life and death. We are constantly birthing and dying. We are a part of this circle ever connected. Yes, we are connected. We are one and the same, life and death, here and there, what is, what was, what yet shall be, ashes to ashes. And somehow, I feel comforted in that. Imposed upon, yes, nudged and smudged out of my routine, yet comforted in the shadows by a light that does not go unseen, a fire that continues to blaze, marked by the pain of the world, yes, but also by hope of something more, marked by what has made it through the burning, marked by what remains, marked not for sorrow, marked not for shame, marked as humans, 
marked by that which is more than mere humanity, mud by the divine, and thus somehow a part of it. It's why we let the ash remain on our faces. It's why we don't wipe it off right away so it can become a part of us. And we can hold this humanity and divinity, pain, hope, connection, marked, marked by our faith, a faith that calls us to see the depth of life and death, a faith that knows that life burns through dark night, a faith that walks us through pain. now we invite you into this space that you might too be smudged, be marked, be known, and be claimed as a relative. Pastor Joe and I will be on each side of the table. I'm going to put my mask back on for you and we'll invite you forward to receive the ashes.
Let us join together. We'll remain seated singing The Day Must Come to the melody of The Water is Wide, a familiar melody, and the words are on the screen in front. Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, go out into the world, into the night, with all its pain and all its joy, and see both shadow and light, marked by an interconnection to all that is and was, and yet shall be. Mark, beloved, mark. 